morning, the tide has not turned at P&G, at least not enough to elect an activist hedge fund investor to the company's board of directors. Procter & Gamble today said the votes are in and Nelson Peltz is not going to get a seat on the board. So now what? Local 12's Jeff Hurst looks at what's next for the consumer products giant. It was the most expensive proxy fight in corporate history. The two sides in the battle, P&G itself and hedge fund investor Nelson Peltz, spending something like $100 million combined in the fight for the very soul of a Cincinnati corporate icon. While P&G declared victory, saying Peltz did not win a seat on the company's board, Peltz predicted the margin would be no more than 1% and might challenge the final count. Peltz wants to split P&G into three operating units, claiming the company's stock is underperforming. Doing the best you can, does that, that's okay for your 10-year-old son, okay? But when you got shareholders' money, about 200 odd billion of it, doing the best you can just ain't going to cut it. P&G argued the company is already making significant changes and will continue to do so, Pelt's campaign or not. I didn't see this fracture our company. I saw it bring us together. I saw it bring the board together. The commitment to do what is right, to deliver good results, then deliver great results and do it the right way, to me was throughout the organization and the investors pushed the same thing. We want to see P&G back in the top third of our peer group. And I said, we're aligned on that and we're working very hard to make that happen. But even with the apparent victory, analysts say P&G still faces pressure to make more money and therefore increase stock value. James Russell of Cincinnati-based Ball and Gainer says the proxy fight is only the first or second inning of a nine inning game. What I think people will be watching, investors especially, is for improvement every single quarter for a period of years. Every quarter we see two, three, four, five percent type of improvement in a variety of operating metrics. Slow and steady wins the race. Not only was this proxy battle expensive, but it was also different than most others. Most stock in most big companies is owned by institutional investors like Nelson Peltz. But 40% of P&G stock is owned by P&G retirees, employees, and small investors, many of whom live in P&G's hometown right here, and perhaps may have been more favorably inclined towards the company as opposed to an outsider. P&G stock closed today at $91.62 a share, down 50 cents. But remember, this is a long-term question. Don't focus on just one day. Back to you. Fascinating fight, Jeff. Thanks very much. Although P&G is claiming victory in today's preliminary vote count, it could be several weeks before the final results are out. Meantime, Nelson Peltz is also putting pressure on another company with major Cincinnati ties, GE. Yesterday, a Peltz colleague from his investment firm was named to the GE board. GE is based in Boston, but has thousands of employees.